Hello, my name's Derek Lyons. Uh, welcome to Mancurian Matters. I'm an actor from Star Wars A New Hope, Indiana Jones, Bond, and many other projects, including Z-Listers this year, oh sorry, next year, and a, the most amazing documentary called Elstree 1976, of which I appear in Star, apparently. I'm not an egotistic person. <laughs> Okay. First of all, was Star Wars a childhood obsession and do you kind of, like it was a dream come true when you started? Well obviously it was the first, uh, you know, first film I ever worked on when I was 18 and uh, you know, when I was a little boy I used to entertain my family and friends and I got into film business through my father and I got a family who were actors and singers and all that kind of stuff. So I had some kind of background and uh, I say when I was 18, I worked in the very first Star Wars movie. It was a, an amazing experience, you know, being in the, the Masasi Temple, where they get the medals and stuff, you know. And to be chosen as the uh, medal bearer, in fact, the first medal bearer to be chosen, with a friend of mine called Robert. Um, it was wonderful, you know, it was a wonderful experience. So, so I played the medal bearer and also the Rebel Honor Guard. So when the uh, doors open, when the heroes come through, which is Harrison, and Mark Camel, Luke and Haz, and Chewbacca, obviously, Peter Mayhew. I'm on the left-hand side, you know, we're holding the spot. He's called a pike. And the other guy on the other side is a guy called Lorne Peterson, who is um, who works for Lucasfilm still, and he does all the um, special effects and the model making and stuff like that. And it wasn't CGI in those days. It was all film with models, you know. So, um, yeah, so I was, I was seen in those two, those two scenes specifically and, and a couple other scenes in the war room, and also in the briefing room with General Dodona. And you see me briefly in one shot looking. Uh, and when, they, when, we, when he says, may the force be with you, I suddenly turn head, you see my head. <laughs> but they did a reverse photograph of it. And they got me, because they took me to, to another scene. And uh, when I eventually saw this photograph, we, a friend my friend John Chapman's in, uh, the guy where I was sitting was an old, really old man, you know, and they replaced because I, they took me off and I, was, I lost that opportunity, opportunity to be in that actually photograph, you know. But yeah, Star Wars has followed me all, all these years and uh, it's been a marvellous experience. I've, I've travelled, you know, the world. I've been to Japan, just specifically me, uh, promoting my, my little action figure, Rebel Honor Guard one, and uh, I've been to Germany. I've been to most of Europe, and this year I have... Um, three conventions I'm doing, uh, one in Bournemouth in end of August, and then one, what's the other one I'm doing? Oh yeah, one in, up the road from here in Stoke-on-Trent, which is for the ra local radio station, um, the community radio station, we help them raise money for the station to get the FM uh, license or whatever, it costs a lot of money, so w myself and a few other people are uh, supporting that, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously I worked on Star Wars, Indiana Jones, James Bond, Superman, you know, as an actor or kind of supporting actor at that time. And this year I, I completed two films, one called uh, Z-Listers, which is uh, kind of taking the mickey out of this kind of, you know, convention stuff. Uh, I, pay a, I play a BBC executive I mean, in an office just like this, and uh, the director was very pleased. I, I worked as an actor for seven years, really through ill health and other stuff and uh, they were really pleased with me uh, and uh, and also what's the other one? Oh yeah Elstree 1976 John Spira film Hank Starr's produced it involves 10 actors including Dave Prowse Paul Blake who you see here today um, Kathy, um, who was it, uh, Pam Rose um, John Chapman etc and it's a documentary which is coming out next year uh, it's going to be a big one uh, and it's about 10 actors who worked on the very first Star Wars film and it's not specifically about Star Wars it's about what happened to the you know what what happened to these people before and after Star Wars you know the template or the the, the kind of bottom thing is the bottom line is Star Wars what happened afterwards so it looks like a really good documentary they've raised the kickstart um, they only needed 30 grand for because you know promotion blu-rays to, to make all that stuff cost a lot of money and they've actually raised up to, I think yesterday, about 42,000. And it's finished now, I think the hours are finished now, because they had, they had so many, uh, like a month to get this money. I didn't realise that with Kickstarter, if you don't get the, the, the price you're asking for, like 30 grand, you don't get anything. So we were very like, and I helped promote that for them, and they're very pleased. And then two weeks ago, uh, I went to Elstree Studios um, with Pam and John and a few other people, 
and we did a talk in the studio, a nice circular talk about Star Wars and uh, our contribution to it, you know, my, my little contribution basically, being a medal bearer, you know, non-speaking, Charlie Chaplin, you know, <laughs> and, um, and, uh, and, and so they've done an interview with me, filmed me again, and they're coming to my house to film me, but it's going to be on the extra extras as well, this is going to be a kind of big movie next year, you know, it's going to be, a, they're having a, prem a premiere at the British Film Institute, and, um, also, uh, they're doing a preview at Elstree Studios, Studios itself, you know. And um, would you have when you worked on um, the Bond movies and um, with Harrison Ford again on Indiana Jones? Um, where would you say kind of Star Wars stands in? Uh, well, you know, Star Wars, you know, is, is, is yeah, Star Wars, uh, you know, it's been great for me. I mean, the first thing I st started off with, and I worked with Harrison Ford, you know, on, on Indiana Jones: Last Crusade. Very nice. And we sang Happy Birthday to him actually one day, and. Michael Jackson came on set, I remember that. It's a very funny story actually. Michael Jackson came up, and we knew the security was there, and he came up to me and said, hey Michael, yeah. And then Sean Connery's beside me, and, and I know Sean very well, because his son's a friend of mine. And Michael Jackson went up to him and says, hi, I'm Michael. He said, I'm sure you are. <laughs> and he, he just turned away and walked away from him. Totally ignored him. Seriously, I'm sure you are. <laughs> it was quite funny, really. And, uh, and Michael Jackson, he didn't know what to do, you know, but he's Sean Connery, he's James Bond. I mean, Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson, but Sean Connery is a, you know, icon, isn't he? Um, and we had, yeah, so we had a great time on Indiana Jones, saying happy birthday to him. And, and I funny, I was just so funny because I collect autographs sometimes, you know, and I had this book called Stars, and I got all the cast, you know, John Reese Davis, Telly Millier, and Sean Connery, et cetera, to sign this book. And I went up to George Lucas, and George remembered me from the first film, and he's a very really sweet man, you know. And I said, George, George, could you sign this book? You know, you'll think, oh, yeah, yeah, no, no problem, Derek, no problem. And he put, to Derek, may the force be with you. And he actually signed George Lucas, and now he just does this, you know, like a squiggle. And so I passed it the book to uh, Steven Spielberg. I said, Steven, could you put, to Derek, please, you know. And he totally ignored me, and there's this picture, which is a photograph, uh, the book opens, there's a picture of, like, Steven Spielberg on that side, and E.T. the other side, you know, as you open it up like that. And he just wrote Steven Spielberg, E.T. That was it. I said, Stephen, you didn't, you, you didn't put to Derek, and he totally, yeah. he totally ignored me. <laughs> uh, he totally ignored me, and uh, and so, um, you know. But I don't. I see. I'm not impressed by these people. If they're nice to me, then I'm nice to them. You know. I worked on uh, movies like The Shining, Jack Nicholson. I've just contributed to a, movie, a f book which comes out in America next year called Essays on The Shining. I did one chapter for them, uh, and Jack was very nice. I, he took me to his dressing room, and Jack, Jack Nicholson, you imagine that. Um, but James Bond-wise, I worked on four Bonds, I know you asked that question. I uh, worked on Living Daylights, where I had a part as MI6 agent. View to a Kill, where I worked with the stunt team, because I did train as a stuntman, believe it or not. Um, in the big tank, uh, I had to fall in this water and stuff. And I worked on Octopussy as a Air Force base officer. And Goldeneye, I was a casino, I guess you hardly saw me in that one, but I knew... Funny enough, Pierce Brosnan very well, because him and I were supporting artists on a film called The Mirror Cracked years ago. He did a scene with Elizabeth Taylor, and I did a scene with Rock Hudson. And years later, we I worked on his stuff because he became a star before the Bond stuff. And I never mentioned that we worked together. You know, I never wanted to because some people, you know, I didn't do background before. I'm, you know, I'm an actor, um, but. A lot of actors have done that, you know, a lot of actors, the most famous actors have all done background work. I never call it extra work, it's, you know, supporting artists, and I kind of trained as an actor anyway. Um, but yeah, I've had a lot of fun, you know, I, I've had a lot of fun. Uh, I did another movie, a sci-fi movie, which is quite cult in some ways, called Kroll, with, uh, and, uh, with um, Ken, Ken Adams, and uh, it was a P.T. Yates film. P.T. Yates, P.T. Yates is quite a famous, now departed, English director who did... Um, Bullet with Steve McQueen, one of my heroes, and so he directed this movie. And there it was there was Robbie Coltrane, Liam Neeson, and I was one of the white, main white slayers. And we do a scene with a tiger. And I'll tell you this story; it's very funny actually. Myself, myself, and a friend called Dominic Weimark, we were um, uh, dressed in this kind of costume, this white slayer, and this thing weighed two hundred pounds or more, a really heavy thing. And they put us up in this special set, enclosed set, because they released a tiger. And what they did is, is a Billy Smart Circus thing, and they had to um, starve the, the, the tiger for at least three or four days. Because as the tiger comes in, 
he goes around and attacks this model of a slayer. And he, they want the tiger to hit the head and get the meat, you know, because they put meat down this up another slayer's thing costume. Anyway, they put they put this behind this it's enclosed area with this perspex um, glass. So we're we're walking on, on action. We're walking towards with this thing walking like this, you know, and um, the chippies, the people who do all the kind of uh, sets and the people, yeah, they put just wooden wedges just hold his thing because they had to take it away and we get out and put it back and put the wedges so we're basically trapped so on action we're walking forward and Dominic's behind me walking forward they release the tiger and the bloody tiger excuse my language he, he rather than going for the model same height as me it ran and went for the glass and put his claws behind the and I was you know really my stomach you know what I was white if you could see my face I must have gone pale because it moved the glass now this tiger wanted real meat, which is me. <laughs> and we, anyway, we we did it again and again and again. We did it maybe ten times, you know. And afterwards, I had to go see a producer and get extra money because I spoke to the stunt team. He said, "That's a stunt, Derek. You know, you were with a tiger." But that really actually happened, you know. So there were so many things like that, you know. Had you done any stuntman training before that, or was that kind of? Well, I, I did train. I did train. Um, I, in uh, there was a guy called Tom Delmar, he's a good friend of mine, a good stunt coordinator. And this is when I'm a bit older because I still do martial arts and I'm still from my age at 55, I'm quite fit still. Um, uh, yeah, because he, he knew I was, I watched a film called Tabloid TV with John Hurt and I was a policeman, I was dressed as a policeman and I had to um, grab this guy and I was talking about martial arts with him. He said, yeah, you'd be, you know, and he knows because I'm a swimming coach teacher and he said, you'd be, you know, I know you'd be a great stuntman, you know. In Leaves Green, which is near, in, in Bromley, I did uh, horse riding, I did trampolining at Crystal Palace. I got my martial arts anyway. My swimming I had anyway because I'm a coach. I needed six qualifications, but I, I was the only one that I did was should should have done is uh, they call it chalking, where you go up mountains and you 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 chalk at each climb and you once you once you get the special lead certificate in that then you can that's your qualification. But it takes time, so it took too, too much time and money, and I decided well, I can't do it. I mean, I was really burning myself out by doing it. I was doing this every day and it cost a fortune to do all this stuff, you know. And then a lot, a lot of actors and people are not rich, you know. So, yeah, so I kind of did that. And I, I've done a few stunts, you know. I've done, I've done a kind of stunt falling back of the table uh, on a thing called Murder Rooms with Ian Richardson. And because uh, I knew the stunt man, Andy Bradford. Uh, and I, I did something on, on Mona Lisa. This is quite a nice one. Uh, Bob, the late Bob Hoskins, uh, lovely man. Um, uh, the director of Mona Lisa, Irish director, can't remember his name at the moment. It comes to me in a minute. Anyway, we're at um, Brighton Pier, and he came up to me because I thought he was quite a fit looking. He said, "Would you mind if Bob knocks you, knocks you over, or knocks you down as he runs through? You've been chased by the, the villains and stuff." And I spoke to Bob. I said, "Yes, okay, no problem." Now I didn't expect the weight, and he's like a little bulldog, you know. He was like a bulldog, so strong, you know. So he's running. Kathy Tice is with him. He's running, and I, what I did, my cue is to walk across to the one of the slot machines at the right timing, because I've always got pretty good timing actually. As he as he hits me, he, I suddenly go whack down, you know. I mean, you, you see the shot, and you see Bob Hoskins can hit this guy, which is me, and I go whoa! It's like someone's pulled a, a rope. I did that ten times, and every time Bob Hoskins came, you right, son? You right, son? Uh, I tell you, even to this day, I get cold, feeling shivers because my my shoulders aching, killing me. You know, I've got extra money for it. You know, I wasn't supposed to do it because it's a stunt. I've done things jumping across building as well and stuff like that, which you're not supposed to do. I wasn't even a qualified stunt man, but they can get if they can get away with you and think you can do it, you did it. So I've done about five stunts, you know, minor stuff, you know, but stuff which I could have fallen, you know to my death, there was no pad, there was no uh, stuff between, when I jumped from one uh, part of the roof on, on this, um, oh, I had to go up this drain pipe and jump across, or well, stretch my leg across, but literally jump off, and it was about 20, 30 feet drop onto concrete, you know, that was in Stockwell. So yeah, double that stuff. Um, with you starting acting at such a young age, um, would you have any advice to anybody wanting to get into the film industry? Yeah, as my Uncle Terry said, he was an actor, he was a stuntman and an actor, he said, you know, you've got to go to drama school. I mean, that's very good. I mean, you don't have to, because I have natural ability anyway. I've always been pretty good at stuff. 
I always see I have my securities and stuff, and to have that acting training is very important to do stage work and things like that. But not big head, but I, I've been very lucky, and I'm just natural. I always, on films, I, in fact, I'll get to tell you a quick story. When I was um, about two years ago, Terry Bamba, a very good friend of mine, who is on the Bond films, he's a director on, on the Bond films, he asked me to do a talk at the uh, Production Guild in at Pinewood Studios, two assistant directors. Now, it was Vic Armstrong, who's Harrison Ford's um, stunt double, uh, he's now stunt coordinator director. Then Michael Stevenson, who won an Oscar as the best, like, second in the business. Or third, I think, is second, yeah. And and then me, so I was the third person. I was really honoured. And there's me in this conference room, all these assistant directors, and I'm telling, I'm talking to them, and lectured them, because I've got, I've got a BA in cinema studies anyway, and which I did a few years ago. Um, so I was talking to them, and, and it went really well, and I got really a lot of applause, and letters saying thank you, you were brilliant, you know. So getting back to your question, um, I diversified there. Um, I think that you either have or you haven't got it, you know. Some people are just naturally able to get on stage and sing or dance or act, but I think it's good to have some kind of formal training, you know, even go to a local drama school, or drama, amateur dramatics or whatever. But I think it's a good idea to do that, you know. Uh, just, it just kind of... It gives you a grounding, you know, um, but I've done it the hard way. I mean, 40 years in the business, you know, I've been almost 40 years, yeah. And um, I say, you know, to this point, you know, I'm in quite a big part a few weeks ago when I did this film, Z-Listers, and, and I was really amazed because I was with this girl, actress called Jill Greenacre, and she's quite well known, she's a drama teacher and thing, and she said to me, you were brilliant, Derek. You haven't done this for seven years, I said, no. But you're really good, do you train? I said, well, not really, I just kind of, played the game and just did it, you know. Um, what was the inspiration behind the new film following all the Star Wars, the original Star Wars actors, the documentary? Oh, the this, 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 this Star Wars in 1976? Yeah. What was the inspiration behind it? Well, Star Wars, obviously. You know, Star Wars, um, it, it was actually John Chapman who did a, a friend of mine who did, uh, he plays one of the pilots, he met John Spear, the director, on a writing course, script writing course, and then Star Wars came up, and it was from that. That was a seed, and then it would. Then obviously we're talking about the, then. Then John doesn't really like a documentary, as it were, oh, about Star Wars. As everyone's done that, he wanted a different angle. Uh, he did another. He did another documentary called Anyone Can Play Guitar, but about Oxford and about the people like Coldplay. Not Coldplay. Um, Oh God, the groups, uh, the groups. There's quite a few groups who come from Radiohead, for example, Oxford. You know, and he was doing a documentary about about these guys. So this documentary is basically looking at us as human beings, about our, our, our self, our life, our philosophy, our belief. You know, I talk about my kind of martial art and Zen Swim, which I kind of created. I'm apparently the founder of Zen Swim, which is a martial art. Um, so we, we talk about all that kind of stuff and about the business and our experiences since Star Wars. and So, you know, it's just basically about that. And it's about a two-hour movie a documentary. It's going to be really good, you know. Um, and that's it, really. It's just, you know, that's, that's it about Star Wars, really. And what would you say has been your absolute high point over the last 40 years? High point? Meeting you. <laughs> 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 no, uh, my high point... Um, I just think for myself uh, that I'm just happy that what I, how to be here, alive, well. Yeah, and um, I almost had a fatal accident last year. I'll tell you a quite funny story. Um, I'm a Buddhist and I have this head of a Buddha from a temple from Burma. It weighs five kilos. And I got back from Sweden and I, get, I, got very t I was very tired. And I had to put these plugs at the back of them, this cupboard, and this cupboard's about four foot off the ground. So I pulled the cupboard out, and I thought, I might as well hoover, so I hoover. Guess what happens next? The thing topples and hits me in the head, knocks me out. And I lost an hour, and then I, the ambulance, I phoned the ambulance and all that stuff, rushed me to hospital, and uh, scan. I got a little slight dent in my head at the top. And uh, uh, what they've diagnosed, I've got mild traumatic brain injury believe it or not. And if we had this interview, say, six months ago, I'll be, I'll be like that, stuttering and, and in conversation. It still happens in conversation. But I sometimes think, what are we talking about? You know, what am I doing here? So it's, it happens still. And it's, apparently, it's because the brain's still kind of healing. And I didn't have an, have an operation. 
but it, it, it concussion can last for two years. But the amazing, most amazing thing about it is, this is really weird. When I got the script for Z Listers, I could look at it and immediately I could I, I, I knew it. So it's done something to my brain. Whereas before it took me a few you know a week to learn something, but now I can look at something and it's instant. I've always had a pretty photographic memory anyway, but it's like it improved it. So the Buddha's done something for me. I make a, I made a joke with people saying, yes, uh, I got hit in the head with the Buddha, death by Buddha, instant karma, you know. Like, I made a joke at the hospital. I was really, del I was like, I was like all over the place. My, it, you know, it's like, you know, that sound of me hit a bell. It was like that. My head was like, shit, ringing. It's like one of those um, cartoons, you know, where you see the, the cat getting hit on the head. And it's like, Ying -ying. so, yeah, it's quite spooky, really. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly good health apart from... Death by Buddha almost.